As Christmas is fast approaching, I thought I'd take a look at a couple of Christmas games, both on 8-bit systems, hence the title of the video, 8-bit Christmas. So the first of these two games I'm going to look at is on the BBC Micro, and it's a game called Sleigh Bells. Don't have a lot of information about it, but here's the fact file such that it is. Sleigh Bells was released in 1983 uh, in PAL territories, published by Gemini, and that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, I can't find the name of the developer anywhere. Price paid is not applicable, and the current going rate on eBay, I've got no idea because I can't find a copy of it in current or completed items. So that was the fact file such that it was. Let's have a look at the game. Okay, so let's fire up the game. And you're immediately presented with a rendering of a Christmas tree and some horrible rendition of the Jingle Bells music. Which can't be skipped, by the way. And then there's some uh, options. So we're going to use keyboard. Uh, we're going to keep the sound despite it being thus, thus far horrible. And you get another rendition of it. And then we can go on to start the game, hopefully. And it takes ages to draw the screen, but basically this is the first screen. The idea of the first screen is to get into this cave. The overall idea of the game is to get some presents uh, from inside this cave. So you're attacked in this level by um, four pink snowmen, snowmen I should say, that home in on you. Uh, and the idea is you've got to make your way past them. As you can see, and into the cave. So I'm in the cave now, it's just drawing the cave very slowly. And uh, on each stage you get to uh, survey the stage before you start it and then you press space to start the stage. So on this level all you've really got to do is get through to the bottom of the stage without getting hit by any of these falling icicles. Or whatever they're supposed to be. Which isn't too difficult. The uh, graphics are pretty basic. This cave thing's actually quite nicely drawn. Um, but overall, the graphics are pretty terrible. There's uh, a massive two frames of animation for my little red stick man. Uh, that told me that I just completed the level and gave me a score. Um, I don't have. I'll go back to that now, so we'll see on the next day. So the next stage looks identical, but it's actually different. Uh, I'll just move quickly because you've got this bat flying around the cave, and this time you've got to make your way to the bottom of the cave, avoiding the bat, and not get hit by the snowmen that uh, keep popping up out the bottom of the screen. Ah, this bat got me. And then it draws the whole screen again. So let's have another crack at that level. See if I can get it right this time. Very annoying uh, walking sound. Uh, the sounds are very basic. It's basically limited to um, the sound that you make. It's got me again. What a disaster. Uh, the sound you make when you walk, and the sound you make when you fall, and the sound you make when you die. That's pretty much it for sounds. And they're generally awful. Let's see if I can get this right this time. The key is to get to the end of this platform before he comes back along the top, I think. And I'll just wait here so he goes over the top of me. And that should get me through to the final stage. So you can see there it's got a um, score so far, 3,190, no presents saved, three lives remaining. Move on to the final stage, which again is drawn agonisingly slowly. And the idea of this one is you've got to collect the presents that are being dropped by the elves, drop them on the right hand side of the screen, and once again avoid the bat that's flying around. Uh, you do that as quickly as possible and you get some kind of a bonus depending on how fast you do it. So 
So on to my last present. And that's the first stage completed. With a terrible rendition of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, summary there. That's all, what I've done so far. Three lives remaining. And then basically it goes right back to the beginning. And that's it. Um, it doesn't get any more difficult. Uh, there's no variation to the speed of the enemies. There's no variation to what you've got to do on each stage. There's no variation to the number of presents you've got to collect at the end of the stage. It's exact repeat of what you've just seen. Uh, so no need to put you through it again. It, in summary, it's pretty terrible. In fact, it's more than terrible. It's awful. Is that worse than terrible? I don't know. But it's terrible. Uh, so I don't think we really need to see much more of that. Um, there are a couple of other... Christmas themed games on the BBC Micro, uh, none of which are any better than this really. So I'm going to move on to looking at another 8-bit uh, Christmas computer game, which is on the Commodore 64, and that's Santa's Christmas Capers. So what we can do is have a look at the fact file for that game, uh, and then I'll have a look at the packaging as well. Santa's Christmas Caper was released in 1990 in PAL Territories, published by Zeppelin Games and developed by Reflective Designs and the price I paid was £2.69 current going rate on eBay is around 3 to 5 quid, so pretty much what I paid for it, maybe a little bit more so let's now take a look at the packaging for the game here's the front cover and it's got uh, Santa's Christmas Caper logo on it uh, and a big picture of Santa riding his sleigh and being bombarded with something I think can't quite make out what that is, but it's like presents flying. Oh, it's, it's like a plunger flying at him. Uh, and you've got the Zeppelin Games logo in the bottom corner there. Spine of the game, just says Santa's Christmas caper on it. And the back cover has got the blurb, of course. So it's Christmas Eve, the snow is falling slowly. To, well, that's a bit detailed for a blurb. Uh, Santa's Claus's Christmas pudding has been spiked by the mischievous pixies, so you must race through the night skies on Santa's sleigh, delivering all the Christmas presents before the children wake up. Sounds like a normal Christmas Eve for Santa, really, drunk or not. So there's some screenshots there, and you can see the sleigh uh, flying along a snowy landscape. There's a, a big cabin on that one, and some kind of North Pole landscape on that shot there. And that's about it for the outside of the packaging. So inside we've got a picture of a giant Christmas pudding, which also seems to be a bomb, based on the fact that it's got a few sticking out at the end of it there. And inside we've got the instructions, so Santa's controlled with a joystick. Uh, the first part of the game is to leave Santa's hideout in Lapland, then travel over the Atlantic Ocean and finally deliver some presents. And there's some more blurb there about the pixies uh, throwing things at you and so forth. Uh, and then there's the joystick controls which are just up, down, left, right and fire. And that's pretty much it except for an advert for uh, Kickbox Vigilante, I think that is, uh, another game uh, that Zeppelin Games produced. So here's the title screen, and as you can see, it says there, You are Santa Claus in Santa's Christmas Capers, not Caper, as it says on the packaging. Uh, it's got all the credits there, which I won't bother reading, because it's really difficult to read. Um, not much more to say other than the tune, which is, uh, is this... Christmas Carol called Joy to the World, I'm not sure, but it's like a proper technoed up Sid version of that tune. Which is pretty cool. So let's get on with playing the game itself. So, um, as you can see, uh, it's not made entirely clear by the packaging uh, or the instructions, but it is actually a scrolling shoot 'em up. Uh, you're Santa in his sleigh, uh, pulled by one reindeer, and you're basically just going to make your way across the landscape, horizontally scrolling, shooting all the various objects, which range from um, zeppelins to planes to um, drums to uh, footballs. Basically, it's there's a balloon there, uh, it's all kinds of things that could be given as presents effectively and they fire other things like Christmas baubles and Christmas puddings at you uh, there's candy canes there and it's pretty straightforward stuff, you've just got to make your way across the landscape to the end of the level uh, and you can probably guess what happens there, hopefully we'll get that far it is quite tricky because 
your uh, player's uh, ship slash sleigh slash reindeer slash Santa is absolutely massive and therefore very difficult to avoid some of the projectiles that are being thrown. Uh, I'm not doing that badly at the moment. Uh, the backgrounds are quite nice, you've got some snowy hills, uh, various other things come up as you'll see in uh, due course. The graphics generally are pretty good, uh, nice, pretty simplistic animation of uh, Santa on his sleigh. Oh, there goes another life. That's what I mean about being unable to avoid certain projectiles. Um, you can fly in front of the landscape for the most part, but there seems to be some bits where you crash into it, so I'm just trying to avoid it generally. So yeah, the, uh, the main character is massive, but it's quite nicely drawn. Uh, the other things are fairly generic looking. Um, as I mentioned, the landscapes are fairly nice. The, the music, again, is uh, quite cool. Probably the best part of the game so far, at least. Um, this one's, again, some kind of Christmas song that I, it's familiar to, but I can't remember what it's called. I've probably got it on one of the numerous Christmas CDs that's been released over the years, but can't, the name escapes me at the moment. But again, they've sort of ramped it up uh, made it sort of synth-tastic with a lot of uh, beats and stuff. Uh, so this is the end of level boss, uh, which is seems to be two, what I can only describe as two old people in uh, elf clothes holding hands. It's a little bit bizarre, but there we go. Oh, that's another life gone. That's pretty terrible. There we go. Got rid of it. So that was the first stage completed. Um, completed the level and now get to move on to the next stage. You get some bonus points. Got a couple of lives left. And we get some more music and now we're heading over the Atlantic Ocean um, and you definitely can't crash into these icebergs so you have to negotiate around them which again makes it fairly difficult when things like this happen where things are just closing in so close on you you can't get around them but I'll do my best there goes another yeah see so I crashed into the landscape again and that's basically game over um, what I'll do is have another playthrough and try and get a bit further on level 2 but I've never got much further than what you've just seen so here I'm back on level 2 and I've only got two lives again so it's not likely to be much better a performance than the previous go but I'll give it a go see how I get on got a little bit further already without losing a life so that's promising and I've got an extra life there I think as well which is nice again I don't see how you can avoid those things without getting hit no it's impossible um, but at least you've seen a little bit more of the landscape than the previous go. Oh, come on, that's totally unfair. Basically, there's a lot of places where you just can't get past the enemies without getting hit, and uh, you only get five lives to start with. Extra lives come every 10,000 points, so it does make it a little bit tricky to get uh, a reasonable distance through the game. Although I'm doing a lot better this time than the last go. What a lot of footballs. You can shoot some of the spikes above you, but then you get into positions like this where you're so close to the things that you can hit that it's, uh, it's really difficult to negotiate them. Although, again, I managed it, surprisingly. This is the furthest I've got in the game, and I've no idea what's coming up. Presumably another end of level boss if I get that far, but I've only got one life left, so I doubt it. Oh, I've crashed into the sea! That's just totally unfair. You'd think you'd be able to fly over the sea. So there you go, that's the game, not much more to show about it. Nice graphics, nice sound, pretty terrible, unfair gameplay for the most part. Uh, that's pretty much it for the Christmas 8-bit collection so far. But I might come back and do a couple more, depending on if I've got time before Christmas or not. Those two, not so great really. Um, pretty much just cash-ins on Christmas, as most things released around Christmas time would have been. And still are. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two. One. Zero.